And today on the bench we have uh, something that's going to be going and living permanently on the bench. And I thought I'd show it out before I actually get it shoved back over in the hole. Because, yeah, the, the, the fan in this is woo loud. <laughs> so what this is is a uh, laboratory style amplifier. Um, it's not your normal everyday run-of-the-mill radio amplifier. You know, you hook your radio up to it and hook the antenna up to the other end. Um, if you tried doing that to this, this little little red light's just going to come on. It's not going to hurt it, but the overload light's going to come on. It's just going to shut itself off. Um, this is a laboratory amplifier. It's a it's a output power is actually I mean it's rated at five watts, but it will do up to like nine watts. Um, they spec these at a minimum gain of 37 uh, dBm, and this one actually has uh, I think it was 30. 9 dB gain actually I think is what I measured the maximum uh, out on this um, now this covers from 500 actually you can see it get a little bit worn off of the sticker there it's, but uh, covers from 500 kilohertz up to 1 gigahertz or 1000 megahertz so it's a very wide band amplifier um, and that's what makes it rather unique compared to radio amplifiers Radio amplifiers are very narrow band. They're made to work on a specific frequency range. And once you get out of that, that frequency range, it'll have another circuit in there. You know, if, if it's a multi-band amplifier, you'll have to you know, flip a switch, program. If it's you know, a high-end one, um, you'll have to switch bands. But it has different filter networks and circuitry for each different band that it operates on. But like I say, this one's pretty much a flat frequency response from 500 kilohertz up to 1 gigahertz. The uh, reason I want to put this on the bench is when you're testing amplifiers, it's a pain in the butt because, well, to test an amplifier, you have to put a signal in to the amplifier. So, you know, ideally you want to be using test equipment to do that, a signal generator, because yelling into a microphone, that's not very good. Even using a radio with, you know, you don't know what kind of signals spurious emissions might be coming out of the radio and harmonics, well then the amplifier you're working on is just going to amplify those as well. So yeah, it, it, it just can compound problems trying to diagnose a problem inside of an amplifier. So that's why I want to put this on the bench. Because with this little guy, I can hook, and actually that's how it's hooked up right now, I can hook it up to the signal generator up there. That cord right here, okay, that comes down from the signal generator down to the input on this amplifier and currently I have it set to put out a negative 1 dBm signal so it's a very small signal so matter of fact if I grab a chart here uh, you can see get it in focus and get the glare off of it you can see minus 1 dBm is 0.8 milliwatts very tiny little signal yeah not it's not much of a signal to speak of but, uh, like I say, this has, has a gain of 39 dB. So what you do is, is you would add 39 dB to that. And I, I'm not going to wait for the camera to come back into focus. But that's the whole idea is I can now bump that signal up to a usable level, level out of that signal generator. Because those things aren't meant to hook up to an amplifier. You know, a radio style amplifier and actually drive it. They're meant for hooking up to radios in circuit and doing stuff like that. This is meant to bump the signal up to a more usable level. And like I say, this one's it rated for 5 watts minimum. This one actually does up to about 9 watts. But So right now I just have it, like I say, hooked up to the signal generator. The output's actually just going over to BK1040. Just convenient setup for me right here. Uh, that's, that's a piece of CB equipment. I could hook it up to another meter, but that just happens to be what I have it hooked up to because I've got a sample tap port comes off of that and permanently goes over to the spectrum analyzer. So I can turn the, and that's what I say, this thing is loud, so that's why I wanted to do some talking before I ever turn the damn thing on, because this, the, the, the fan that's in this, um, it looks like, you know, the fans like they use in computers nowadays, except it's not plastic, it's all metal. And it takes this thing a, a while to wind up because the fan blade weighs so much because it's a solid chunk of aluminum. Um, yeah, and these things are not cheap. In the used market, these things sell for several thousands of dollars used. Um, brand new, yeah, you might as well take out a second mortgage on your house to buy one of these things brand new because they are ridiculously expensive. Um, 
you'll see things like this in laboratories, in hospitals. Not sure what they use stuff like this for in hospitals, because I'm <laughs> don't never worked in a hospital, but apparently amplifier research, a lot of their stuff gets used in amplifiers. I'm assuming maybe for like MRIs or PET scan equipment or something like that where they need to do amplification. But uh, now this is a I wouldn't call this one small. This is a mid-size because they do make smaller ones. Uh, you know, laboratory-style amplifiers come a lot smaller with a lot lower output, especially, and not as much gain that this as this has. But they also make much bigger ones. They make them up to a hundred watts and a thousand watts and bigger. Now, when you get up into those levels, yeah, this bench would collapse under the weight of those things because those are usually when you start getting up into the the four digits <laughs> of wattage. Those amplifiers are enormous. Those are like two or three cabinets that are taller than I am, and I'm six foot tall. So, yeah, they're really friggin' big. Um, but like I say, it's wideband. That's why they're so big. There's a shitload of circuitry inside of this thing, and a lot of transistors. You have to realize, this has a higher amplification factor than most of your radio amplifiers. Um, this has several stages. I think there's... God, I count because I actually had to top cover off this, give it a good dust out and cleaning before it gets stuck back over where it's going to live permanently now. Um, it's either seven or nine stages of amplification. Um, and for those of you that uh, use the term pills, that's what they are. Now, they're, every one of them almost is a pretty much different uh, transistor because they start out with a little tiny one, a little small pill. It's only about that big around, and by the time you get over to the last stage over here, it's one of the big square block ones. But... Uh, so let me fire this up. Um, there's not much to it. There's a power button and an overload button. If you overdrive it, it kicks the overload. It protects it. Um, and, and a one-off button. That's all there is. There's a switch on the back for you know, 110, 220 power for the input. Uh, there's a fuse and a power jack to hook up the power cord on the back. That's all there is because um, it's not adjustable. So you just turn it on, and it starts amplifying. So, you know, doesn't get much simpler than that. Um, kind of takes the fun out of working working with stuff because there's no knobs to turn. But hey, <laughs> so like I say, I've got it hooked up to the uh, spectrum analyzer down here. I'm going to be putting in a 27.205. Put the camera up a little bit. 27.205 megahertz signal at minus one dBm, um, and I have it modulated uh, with a 1,000 hertz tone at 30 percent. So flip her on here and you'll hear the uh, monster fan kick in. And let me enable the output on the signal generator. And there's our signal. So there's our the center peak there is the 27.205, and then the two signals out there at the outside edge, that's actually our modulation, the upper and lower sideband. Uh, turn the modulation off. You can see there's our carrier. And there she's back again. So, you know, it's just that simple. It's, like I say, it's just an amplifier. Nothing, <laughs> nothing too fancy. Um, so, let me turn this thing off. Then you can hear it takes the fan a while to wind down. <laughs> like I say, it's a noisy critter. It's got, it's got a really big fan in it. But, uh, so, there you go. And what I'm going to want to use this for, like I say, is testing other amplifiers. It's, now I don't need to use a radio. Uh, so, you know, if I'm working on a, doesn't matter what it is, if I'm working on a 2 meter amplifier, or a, you know, 20 meter amplifier, or 160 meter amplifier, or 20, you know, well, no, this wouldn't work on 23 centimeters, but it'll work up to 33 centimeters. Because um, uh, by the time you get to 23 centimeters, that's above 1 gigahertz. But, uh, so, you know, I can basically, basically uh, amplify anything from the 160 meter band all the way up to 33 centimeters with this. And like I say, it has a, a very flat frequency response or gain over that entire frequency range. So you know, if I'm working on one of those amplifiers and up to, like I say, this will do about 9 watts at maximum gain, um, you know, as long as that's enough drive for that amplifier, then this will work. Now, yeah, one of these days I'd like to get a 100 watt one, um, but, yeah, the, like I say, these things are holy shit expensive. Even used, they're just, it's ridiculous the amount of money these things go for. So, 
Um, you know, this will cover most of what I want to do, though, because that's usually what I, if I'm going to be, and I, the other thing, it's not just working on them, I'd want to test some of them, uh, especially some of these Splatterbox CB amplifiers. I want to show how horrible they, <laughs> they can destroy a signal, because some of these things are, ee, to say the least, on, on, you know, what they do to an RF signal. It goes in the front end. It might look clean going in, but man, by the time it comes out, it's so distorted and the harmonics and it just, oh God, it gets it, it, you know, makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up just thinking about what, what some of those amplifiers do to these poor signals <laughs> that are going out on air. But uh, now we can hook it up. That's the thing. We can hook up a very clean signal coming out of a signal generator, amplify it with something you know, to a usable level to drive that amp that's a, that outputs a very clean signal. Like I say, this is a piece of laboratory equipment. And then we can see what the results are. We can, matter of fact, what I could do is, is you know, take a, a sample off at the output of this so you can see what the signal looks like that's driving that amplifier. And then you can see how horrible it is when it comes out. Uh, so there you go. There's just a quick overview of the amplifier that's going to be going. And it's going to be going right there on top of the uh, isolation transformer variable power AC power supply. Um, looks like a nice little home for it. It's a little bit wider than that, but uh, I don't really don't want to stick this on the bottom. I, I don't know. No, this, yeah, this is going to go up on top of that because of the coax connectors. I need to, pe need to keep this up a little bit. So yeah, I think that's going to go just get sandwiched in between those two right there. And that's part of why that space, why there was still some empty real estate up top. That was kind of my plan, was this was going to go in there when I got time to stick it in there. So now I just need to lift that up, slide this in, and uh, I'll now have a, a lab amp on the bench permanently. So there you go.